Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for May 2017. I apologize in advance for the lack of content uh, over the last month and a bit. Been uh, super busy. Last so well, two weeks ago, we had a new addition to our family, new baby girl. So you can imagine we've been uh, pretty busy with that. I really haven't done much of anything down here. I did get a couple new things in over the past month. Obviously these Rapido uh, rebuilt F40s came in uh, last week. And one other piece of rolling stock by Wheels of Time, I'll show you that. I really haven't had much time to work out on the layout besides uh, I did build a few Fast Tracks turnouts over the last month. So let's get right into it. First we're just going to have a quick look at these Rapido F40s. So I won't go to, uh, we won't go too far in detail on these. I will do a review and test someday, one of these weeks when I have some time. Because they are absolutely beautiful and the drivetrain runs awesome on them. It's kind of what you expect to get from Rapido trains with the locomotives they come out with. There, it just runs absolutely beautiful. I haven't had a chance to run it like full out on a layout. I've only had it on the module here, so it's only been going back and forth. But uh, the sound is fantastic and the way that the sound is paired up with the drivetrain, it's just awesome. So later date, we'll look more into these in detail. Obviously, I got the uh, unnumbered versions. Those are the ones I like. So I have to go ahead and put my own road numbers on them. Apparently, according to Rapido, I'm the only one that buys these uh, unnumbered units and they're not going to be doing them anymore. So if you do like these unnumbered ones, make sure you send a note to Rapido because uh, they, they say there hasn't been very much interest in the unnumbered ones. I personally love the unnumbered locomotives. Uh, I like putting my own road numbers on, get to choose which one, which locomotives you're going to model. So these ones are going to get renumbered to the uh, the the two that pulled my Canadian when I went across Canada a few years ago there. So those are the ones I'm going to do because they're near and dear to my heart. So yeah, that's the uh, the new rebuilt F40s uh, by Rapido Trains Inc. Just show you the, the packaging quick. These guys always have the coolest packaging, I think. They even got the Renaissance style graphic design and everything on it. Those are the ones that I like, the unnumbered variations where they, uh, Rapido actually gives you every road number possible as a uh, water slide decal included in the box. So the other new piece of rolling stock I got in over the last month were a couple of these Wheels of Time Napanee Industries Plain Deck Flat Car, and these are in the CP Rail paint. And these are a really neat uh, piece of rolling stock. It's kind of a been a gap in the market for... CP Rail flat car, so this is really cool that these came out. We'll just have a quick look at the uh, some of the detail on this car. So the only were available in the red, for CP Rail anyway, was the red paint. If we're going to look at the detail on this flat car, we might as well use the F40 to uh, roll it by for us. And we'll just take a quick look at how slow this F40 can operate so this will be steep this is speed step one Love that slow speed on those Rapido locomotives. So that's the new stuff I got in over the last month, guys. Let's go take a look at what I got done on the layout over the past month and a bit. So it really isn't a whole lot new down here, guys, besides I finished the little bit of cork on this uh, CP 
points west reverse loop so it's all done and ready for track now and I started uh, assembling some fast tracks turnouts with a new uh, template I bought so these are all number sixes and I've just been kind of slowly building turnouts for the leads into the re reverse loops which will be all fast tracks tortoise powered turnouts first impression um, they're, they're fun to build I'll say that he does say in his products that you could build a turnout in 40 minutes or 45 minutes something like that I don't see how that's possible I think the, the fastest I've done one is about an hour and a half per turnout so they do take some time and uh, you know depending on what you do they are quite cheap like uh, I bought all the tools and everything from him and I'm looking at about 33 to 35 dollars a turnout to do 25 that's pretty good if I was to build more it would get even cheaper and for some of the hidden reverse loops I'm just building these bare bones turnouts with just these PC board ties and not using the wood ties which is actually his laser cut wood ties are the most expensive parts of the turnout the PC board ties in the rail is actually quite cheap so over here on the entrance to the same reverse loop the CP points west I've got all the turnouts built I need to complete the lead into this staging loop and these are all number six turnouts there's seven right hands and one left hand in the and this is what they'll look like. I'm not going to put the wood ties on because this is about half of this uh, yard lead is covered by the CN layout. So you won't see it. So I'm just leaving them as the bare PC board ties. That's kind of a better view. You can see what the arrangement will look like. So the track for the reverse loops is just Atlas Code 100 and the reason I use that is because it is the absolute cheapest flex track I could find. It looked all over the place and uh, actually MB Klein model train stuff they had the best price even if conver conversion to Canadian dollars and shipping all the way up here they still had the best price. It was, it was like less almost I think it was like maybe just over a dollar a foot which is uh, pretty pretty good. I mean it, I actually went to a, a hobby shop here in Alberta and prices were uh, two or three times more than even shipping it from MB Klein so that's where I got it from and that's the reason why I'm using Atlas Code 100. One thing I learned about the, the Fast Tracks turnouts, you can actually build them to any length you want. So on the for the turnouts that are on the very end of the yard leads, I just built these short ones just to save a little bit of the ME rail. So one thing about building these skeleton fast track turnouts you have to be aware of is the thickness, the depth of the PC board ties to the top of the rail. It's actually a, a little bit skinnier than a normal tie and it's half a millimeter smaller than the thickness of the Atlas Code 100 flex track. So I'll have to shim underneath. So I got some of this evergreen styrene half a mil just white plain styrene sheet. So underneath the Fast Tracks turnouts, there will be a cutout of this just to kind of raise it up that half a millimeter that I need. Another thing that's interesting about the Fast Tracks turnouts that I didn't know, I had a bag of these Osborne model kits, just scenic rail ties, and these can be used just for scenery items or you can actually hand lay with these because he has the, uh, let's see if you can see that, he's got holes drilled in them and also like spikes for the rail. But these are actually the right height to uh, put underneath. It matches the PC board ties, which is interesting. So for anybody that wants to, uh, if you wanted to hand lay, that's a cheap way to go because these are these are really cheap. These Osborne model kits ties, and then you'd either just glue or spike them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do because where I connect them, I could just add a PC board tie, and that might be more solid to actually solder it in when I connect them like that. I could just add a few PC board ties in this open section, connect them that way. We'll see, it's good to have options. And that's all I've been up to over the past month, guys. This next month, we'll see. I mean, like I said, the weather's so nice now, it's pretty tough to come down here, especially you got the two year old and the new baby now. So, finding time to work on the layout's getting a little bit harder these days, but I do want to get this reverse loop done because I could hook up my 
Digitrack booster, and I at least have something that could run trains on down here, which would be nice. Maybe motivate me to spend a little bit more time down here and keep working on stuff. So we'll see how that goes. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.